Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be showing you how to model and animate a gear and slider connection here in Fusion 360. This type of uh, device is actually really useful for converting rotary motion to linear motion. And uh, oftentimes it's used with a crank, but in this case I'm going to actually use a gear with a pin attached to it that will in turn drive a slider. The model is available in a link down in the description below, so feel free to check it out. And without further ado, let's get started. All right, so the approach I want to take with this gear and slider assembly is to first uh, draw up and lay out all the components, put in a base that supports them, and then define all the joints that are going to let us uh, observe the motion. So let's go ahead and start out with the gears. I'll go to Tools, Add-ins, and we're just going to use the gear add-in to uh, produce our spur gears. Uh, check the link down below. I uh, put out a video there uh, just a few days ago actually that uh, shows how to draw spur gears from scratch. So we actually need two spur gears, uh, one large and one small. Uh, let's go ahead and use 20 degree pressure angle, modulus or modulus three. 24 teeth is fine. Let's go with half, mil half millimeter backlash, one millimeter fillet, thickness we'll say 10, and a five millimeter hole for the shaft. So there's our first gear. Let's go ahead and make one more. So this one, we're actually gonna make half the size. So everything is gonna stay the same except for the number of teeth, and that will automatically make the gear half the size. So let's get these into the right position. I'm gonna leave the large gear where it is and move the smaller gear down on the Y axis. First of all, check out our pitch circle diameter. So small one is 18, larger one is 36. So what we're gonna do is move the small gear on the y-axis by 54. And what that does is it lines up the pitch circles so that uh, they mesh correctly. One other thing we can do, uh, just while we're zoomed in here on the smaller gear, is rotate it slightly so that the teeth are actually uh, meshing. So let's go ahead and click M to move again. This time we're gonna rotate by angle. We're gonna choose the small gear. And then for the axis, we want the axis that the shaft is on right there. So let's switch back to a top view here and then rotate just slightly so that the gears are meshing. And it looks perfect just like that, about 15 degrees. All right, so next I want to add a pin to the larger gear and that's what's gonna drive the rod, which in turn uh, drives the slider. So let's go ahead and activate the large gear component and let's draw a sketch on the face of the large gear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a construction circle. And let's say we want our pin to be 50 millimeters out from the center of the gear. And then we'll draw a construction line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw all the components in line so that uh, it's much easier to calculate the distances between them rather than uh, having everything off at odd angles. So we're gonna draw the pin at the lowermost extreme of the gear here. So I'm putting in a, another construction line so that we can use this intersection to draw our pin. So the pin's gonna be two levels. I'm gonna have a five millimeter diameter base. And then on top of that base, we're gonna have a smaller pin, two millimeters in diameter that we can use to actually connect to our rod. So let's go ahead and finish that sketch. Zoom in and let's go ahead and extrude that. So we're gonna extrude both of them first. Let's extrude up five millimeters and join is okay. And let's go ahead and extrude the smaller pin now. This time we want an offset. And let's just go up two millimeters. So there's our gears complete. Let's go ahead now and draw the arm that's gonna connect the large gear to the slider. So again, let's go ahead and create a new component. I'm gonna call this arm. And let's draw a sketch starting on the face of this little base here. So let's try to make it look pretty. We'll go ahead and project this radius up because we're gonna use that too. Then what we'll do is we'll draw another circle using the same Center there, 10 millimeters, this should be good. Let's go ahead and draw a construction line out from the center. 15 should be good. 
And then let's go ahead and draw another line just one millimeter on either side. Then what we can do is draw lines to connect. And then we can make these tangent to the circle here. And then coincident as well. Okay, next up we want to draw the arm of the rod. Yeah, let's say 30 millimeters. And we'll draw another one on the other side here. And then we'll connect them just with a construction line because that's what we're gonna use for a mirror line to go ahead and mirror this part. So if we go create and then mirror, we'll choose this half. The mirror line will just be this little line that we drew at the end here. And there is our outline for the arm. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish that sketch. And what we want to do is extrude this upwards. So we want that, that, the arm. And let's just make it one millimeter thick. And there's our arm. So the next thing we want to draw is our slider. So what I'm going to do here is actually draw it on the under, underside of the face of this. So let's go ahead and make a new component. We'll call this slider. And let's draw a sketch on the underside here. So let's project this circle here because we're gonna need that. And then I want a similar type of a, a structure that we put onto the gear. So I want a base that's gonna support the arm here. So let's go ahead and draw that. five millimeters. So first of all, what I'm gonna do is draw the pin coming up. Let's go minus three, minus two, should be good. So there's our pin. And then let's do another extrusion, this time for the base. And this time, I want this to come down to the same level as the gear. So I believe that's 15 down. And we want this to be a join, so that's okay. Now what I wanna do is this slider's gonna run inside of a slot. So let's go ahead and draw a bit wider base here so that we can have that in the slot. So let's uh, do another sketch on this face this time. And all I'm gonna do is make a 15 millimeter radius circle. Call that done. And then let's go ahead and extrude this upwards by say two millimeters. So there's our slider. And those are really all of the components drawn now. So let's go ahead now and draw a base that we can use to connect all these things together. So let's create a new component. Let's call it base. And let's start a new sketch. This time, let's put the sketch on the XY plane. And let's start down here at the smaller gear. First of all, I want to project the shaft diameter from the gear, so we'll do that. And then we'll draw another circle using the same center. Let's call it 45. Let's do the same thing with the larger gear. So we're gonna project the circle and then draw a larger circle for the base, so we'll say, let's call it 80. Okay, then let's connect these together with some tangent lines. I usually find it easier just to draw the lines on their own first and then apply the constraints. That way you don't get any weird constraints that uh, mess me up. So let's go ahead and apply tangent to both circles. And then let's also put coincident constraints on the endpoints. There we go. So there's our base for the gears. Now let's go ahead and make a base for the slider as well. So if we look back at our larger gear, we put this arm on a circle that's a diameter of 50 millimeters. So that means 
it's going to rotate and as it does so it's going to move along the y-axis 50 millimeters up and down so we're at the lowermost point of our sliders um, location right now and we need to make a slot that is five or sorry uh, 50 millimeters long on the on the y-axis so let's go ahead and do that so let's do something similar to what we did for the gears we'll go ahead and project then we'll draw a larger diameter circle let's call it 30 millimeters and we'll also connect that to the rest of the base So there we go. Let's uh, go ahead and draw our slot now. So we'll draw lines again. Oh, there we go. So we want this to be 50 millimeters. And then we'll just draw the same circles that we had here. So I believe that one was 30. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish the sketch. Let's go ahead and hide the components just so that it's easier to see what we're doing. And first of all, I want to extrude the entire base down. So we'll click on E for extrude, and we want to basically choose the entire base here. New body is fine. Let's go down five millimeters. So there's the bulk of our base. Now what I want to do is go ahead and start drawing the shafts for the gears. So I'm going to hit E to extrude, and we're going to extrude this shaft for the smaller gear upwards. So I believe I want to go up 11 millimeters. Let's just uh, turn on the small gear here, just to have a look. We want to join that to the existing base though, so we'll click join. Let's move over and do the same thing for the larger gear. So I'm going to hit E to extrude again. Go up 11 millimeters and a join. Let's just turn on the larger gear just to double check. And yes, that looks good. So we'll hit OK. Now let's go over and take a look at our slider. So if we turn on the slider, let's actually activate it. So we want this to slide back and forth in a slot. So what I want to do is I want to make an extrusion from the base that comes up about two millimeters and then we'll deal with the, uh, the cover over this uh, washer here after we finish that. Now what I just noticed here is we're actually missing some lines that we need in order to um, extrude this properly. So let's go back and edit the sketch and what we actually need are lines that run parallel to the, uh, to the slider here. And we also need um, a circle here at the end that will match the, uh, the final location of the slider. So let's go ahead and draw that. So we need a circle here that I believe is 15 millimeters. And then we just want lines that connect these two together. So if we click on finish sketch, now we should be able to extrude properly. So press E for extrude. We want this, this, and this. We want this to be a join, and we want to go up two millimeters. So I just realized I need to add another part to the sketch. So, that, so I'm going to go back and edit the sketch. And what we want to do is project this circle onto the current sketch. We want to draw it up here as well. So I believe that is a five millimeter diameter circle. And then we want to connect the two circles with, with lines. Just like that. So if I go ahead and finish the sketch again, now we should be able to extrude upwards and we'll have a slot that the shaft can slide in. So let's go ahead and turn off the slider. I'll hit E to extrude. And we just want to choose everything except for that center slot. Now this one we want to offset by two millimeters up. And then let's go ahead and make this just one millimeter thick. And it's going to be a join. 
that looks right. And that should be our base complete. And now what we can do is start defining the joints so that this uh, device can actually start moving. So we'll go back to our base component and let's focus on the gears here first. Now, because they're actually already in place, we can use as built joints. So we'll go assemble as built. All we do is we choose the gear and the base and then the position we want it to rotate is around this axis right here. So we'll say okay for that one. And then we'll define another as built joint. And rotate around that shaft. Now we haven't actually connected the arm yet, so that's why the arm didn't move. But let's go ahead and do that one next. Now the arm connection to the gear is actually just going to be a revolute connection here as well. So let's go and make another as-built joint. This time it's between the arm and the gear. Rotate around this point here. Let's go ahead and define the motion for the slider here. So we'll do another as-built joint. Now this one is not a revolute joint, this is a pin and slot joint. And the position is like that. So it's rotating correctly, but it's sliding in the wrong direction. We actually want to change this to the Y axis. So we'll hit OK there. And then the last joint that we have to deal with here is the revolute joint between the arm and the slider. So we'll make one more as built joint. This time it's the arm and the slider, and this one is also a revolute joint. So that's all of our joints configured. Uh, the only other thing we need to do is define the relative motion between the two gears. It's not quite smart enough to figure that out on its own. So what we have to do is define a motion link between this joint and this joint. And what we want to say is for every rotation of the small gear, we want the large gear to rotate half as much and in reverse. So let's go ahead and go on drive joints. And we should be able to turn this and see our machine working. So what I'm going to do now is just add some color and materials and pretty this up a bit. One other thing we can do to uh, keep things animated is to add a motion study. So if we go up to assemble, click on motion study, what we can do is choose one of our joints. I'm just going to choose the small gear here. And what we can do is we can say that we want it to loop continuously. And 100 here is one loop. So if we just click there, we can say how many degrees we want that gear to rotate in one loop. Um, so if we want to see the full motion of the large gear and the slider, the small gear needs to rotate twice. So that's 720 degrees. So now if we hit play, our system will just run continuously. That's it for the video today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more like this, please let me know in the comments below the types of devices or machines you'd like to see me model here in Fusion 360. And of course, if you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks and see you again soon.